Mounts, clamps, clips, lots of components influence the long-term stability of a rooftop solar racking system. Today on The Pitch, we zoom in on how these small components can make a big difference with Steve Muma, CEO of Sunmoto. Hey there, Steve. How you doing, Chris? Good to see you. Before we actually get into the nuances of the uh, rooftop racking components, I wanted to congratulate you on just being named CEO. It's kind of breaking news. So, you know, congratulations. I appreciate it. Uh, definitely very exciting. Um, I've been with Sunmoto for, oh, three, three and a half, four years now. And um, there's nowhere I'd rather be. Sunmoto always has a lot going on. It seems like, you know, you cover a, a, a lot of bases that a lot of other uh, solar mounting and racking companies don't. Your nano mount and top tile were recently approved by Miami-Dade County. So I, I wanted to start there as kind of another newsworthy item. The significance of that approval kind of goes beyond the region itself in terms of what it says about the strength of a founding system, right? I guess I wanted you to kind of get into what that it, means. It does. It's the, it's, it's definitely the hardest place to get approved in the country. Um, I think for pretty obvious reasons, given the, you know, the hurricane force winds and, and, and high levels of rain. And we're incredibly excited. We've grown a lot in Florida over the last couple of years. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a booming market for solar. And, and we have some unique products that, that are good for fly for Florida. Our, our, our top tile tile roof attachment has pretty quickly grown to be, you know, I think the dominant tile roof attachment in Florida, but we haven't been able to do it in South Florida. So it's a big deal to have it now. And additionally, Miami data has traditionally been, I don't know, hesitant, I guess, to do deck mounted options. And we are now approved to do deck mount with both the top tile and the nano mount in uh in miami-dade county wow so they approved deck mounting that was i guess not something um i expected you to say is that uh, that seems like maybe that's even more of a unique aspect of your approval it is it's a big deal um you know we've seen a definite trend um around the country toward deck mounting and and the, the reasons make sense you know it, it's it's uh from an installer speed standpoint you, you can't beat it there there's 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 not a proven way to find rafters. It, it's still some trial and error. And uh, when you can take that out of it, you're a lot faster. And um, from a, uh, you know, a performance and a, uh, a, and a leak prevention standpoint, it's preferable because when you're trying to find rafters, you're gonna miss and that's gonna leave open holes that you gotta go back and seal. And that unfortunately doesn't always happen. So, you know, deck mounting eliminates that. And in the case of our, of our top tile product, it is specifically a deck mount product. Um, you know, the, the way that product works, you, you, you can't find rafters. Um, and that's a definite headache with uh, tile roof installation in general is finding those rafters. So, you know, we eliminate that and it, it has not traditionally been something that Miami Dade um, had approved. Did you need to do any additional testing or did they have to just go through their own tests that take a while? I'm kind of curious, like what, if there's anything new that changed or just what, uh, what goes into that approval? Yeah, there's nothing new on the product side. We didn't have to make, make any adjustments or changes or improvements or anything to any of the products to get them through. Um, they've got a couple additional tests that, um, that we hadn't done previously. Uh, the, the, the biggest part of it really is just a matter of, of, of getting all the ducks in a row, I guess, so to speak, in, in terms of getting the information together and the proper tests and everything pulled together in, in the formats and, uh, and the, the proper engineering stamps and reviews and then waiting. Speaking of not fun things, wire management can often be an annoying part of the job. Um, to get done right, at least, um, you know, if you can see some installation photos that are kind of ghastly, you know, that I guess the project was completed, but you know how that not necessarily in the way that you'd like, you know, so just kind of curious, what are some issues that you hear from installers when it comes to wire management about the things yeah. that they are struggling with? This is a good question and a better segue. It's almost like you've done this before. <laughs> wire management, it's, it's one of those little things. I guess that is, is always a nuisance and headache for, for people. You know, I think historically for, for residential racking, there's been, there, there haven't been great solutions for wire management. The, the market's been hungry for it. We've gotten that feedback a lot. You know, a, a lot of people just do zip ties or something like that. You know, there's have been companies, racking companies that have the uh, open channel in the rail for wire management. And there's somewhat of a trend um, with, with some racking companies moving that direction, but there's a lot of drawbacks from that 
Um, as soon as you have that open channel, uh, it makes the rail, the rail weaker. Um, certainly a lot of crews like to use the rail as, you know, sort of a ladder or some, or some support on the roof. And once you've got an open channel, you just can't do that. Um, additionally, from a, a code standpoint, um, you, you are not allowed to have MC4 connectors inside an open channel. Uh, so technically you need to have them pulled out, but that's a detail that's difficult for installers to get to. And if you don't pull them out, um, you get some water in there and you get shorts. Also with the open channels, if you have to go back and service a, sy a system, all of your wires are trapped underneath the modules and you can't access them. We've come up with what to us seemed like, as I said before, a small detail, but as we've, as we've shown it to a lot of installers, they've been incredibly excited. So we're, we're, we're taking advantage of the ability of our, our SMR rail system to have features that allow us to just snap things on. And we have a, it's a, a small plastic wire management clip that just snaps onto the top of the rail as easy on, easy off. And then included in that clip are uh, a wide variety of different size openings so that it could accommodate home run, trunk cable, end phase wires, PV wire, uh, even a place to put a ground wire on there if you need it. And the, the beauty is that it's fast and easy because it's just simple snap onto the rail, but then all the wires are just nicely contained right there in the side of the rail and they're gripped. So it's not like with a zip tie where yes, you're holding the wire, but you're not really grabbing it. So you can still have droops, which causes you to fail um, inspections. Staying on the, the SMR uh, rooftop system, that has been, it seems like a pretty successful system for you since you debuted it. What are, what are some other aspects that have led to it resonating with uh, your customers? In the majority of the markets in which we've launched it, and you know, as, as we've grown as a company, we've done it in a very, very geographically targeted way. I think it's, it's, it's a couple main things and it, and it kind of all gets back to the rail. The rail is the, is the foundational part of any, you know, rail based racking system. It's the most expensive part and then everything one way or the other, it attaches to the rail. So it all comes back to the rail. The features of the rail are optimized for installer speed. So everything snaps onto the rail so that it's secure, but it's also fast for the installer. And then the other place we were able to optimize is from a design standpoint, we were able to have the rail that is the lightest weight rail by a substantial amount on the market, uh, but it's also the strongest rail by a substantial amount on the market. There, our SMR rail is also be able to be used up to 90 PSF snow with one rail that's lighter than everybody else's, but can be basically used anywhere in the country. So it has that versatility where, where we're combining a very attractive price point, um, but also being stronger than other people and faster and easier to use. Before we moved on from the SMR yeah. system, had there been any other so tweaks or updates since you've launched it that you wanted to note? No, no, we've, we've had some minor tweaks. Anytime you've got a new product, once it hits the market and you get a lot of feedback, some things that may, can be made better. So we've made, we've made some minor tweaks and adjustments to the clamps and splices and, uh, and, and, and some various other things. You know, we're a, we're a very responsive company and, um, we listen. And you mentioned the, uh, kind of rolling out market by market. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like you're maybe starting to enter some newer markets or I, I saw some regional hires. We um, are uh, big new targets for this year are the Southwest. Um, we just brought on a new regional manager in the Southwest. So we're going to be aggressively targeting Arizona, New Mexico, uh, Las Vegas, Southern California. We're also going to be looking to make a, a, a much stronger push into uh, New England and the Mid-Atlantic. Um, we've had a presence in New England for a while, but it's been primarily ground mount. Um, so we're, we're currently, you know, recruiting and hiring for somebody to, um, target that market aggressively. You know, as, as we wrap up here, uh, beyond the SMR, which I know I focus on a lot today, um, are there any other product updates or new things you wanted to, to note? We, we've got a couple of things in the pipeline that we're, we're very excited about. We have a, a new family of metal roof attachments that we're coming out with. One of the frustrations that a lot of people have with metal roof attachments is, uh, is skew count. Metal roof manufacturers are, uh, do not do us in solar any favors, um, with, the the incredible amount of different shapes and sizes and profiles that they have. Um, so as a result, you know, the industry has been stuck with just, you know, having a lot of skews and and needing to kind of 
pick something very specific based upon the metal roof that they're dealing with. And um, so we're we're in in kind of our our, our testing phase now on a couple um, metal roof attachments that we we feel very confident will be you know have an attractive price point, be fast and easy to install but also with a, a very limited skew count, help us hit the majority of the metal roofs. I'm hoping later this year, we'll be ready to, to, to launch that. Steve, thanks for taking the time today, you know, and your, especially your announcement week here as CEO, congrats again. And, you know, just thanks for taking the time to make the pitch today. I appreciate it. Always enjoy talking with you, Chris.